The Earth 65 million years ago was a very different place. The land was dominated by giant creatures that were fantastical, bizarre, and seemingly alien to what we have now. Despite their long reign on the Earth, they were wiped out 65 million years ago from an asteroid impact and subsequent rapid climate change. Our only tantalizing insights into the age of the dinosaurs are found in the ground through the fossil record. On my desk, I have a replica of a Triceratops skull. And from just fossils alone, we can learn an incredible amount about these creatures. The Triceratops was a herbivore, and we know this based off of its teeth and its beak. And of course, we also know that this was a formidable creature to its rivals and to predators, from its bony protective frill to its aggressive horns. By comparing the behavior of modern animals, we can also make educated guesses at how the Triceratops behaved. But through paleontology alone, we will never truly understand them, short of some Jurassic Park breakthrough. With what we know of the universe, is there a way that we could actually look back in time and see the dinosaurs in action? Some might suggest that time travel could let us do just that. But so far as we know, time travel backward in time isn't directly possible. I say directly because astronomers are like cosmic time travelers. The further away we look, the further back in time we see. Thanks to the finite speed of light, it takes time for light to travel across space. For our everyday purposes, the speed of light is so insanely fast that everything just seems to be instantaneous. But on the scale of stars and galaxies, the speed of light is slow. In a year, light will travel about 9.5 trillion kilometers, which is where the term light year comes from. It's just the distance light travels in a year. So if something is one light year away from us, we see the light that object emitted one year ago. So we see it as it was one year in the past. Time travel. So if you wanted to observe the dinosaurs, you would need to be at least 65 million light years away from us. This takes you far outside of the Milky Way galaxy to, say, the galaxy NGC 3972. Now to address the Brachiosaur in the room, we could never get that far away. So in that sense, sadly, it's impossible for us to ever watch dinosaurs in action. But perhaps there is a super advanced alien civilization in NGC 3972 that has heard about the incredible dinosaurs of Earth and wants to take a look. What kind of telescope would they need and is it possible? The first point we should consider is the angular resolution of a telescope. This is the term that tells us how close to objects, say stars, can be before the telescope optics blurs it all together into a single blob. To first order, the angular resolution of the telescope can be described with this equation, where theta is the angle limit, lambda is the wavelength of light your telescope is observing, d is the diameter of your telescope, and 1.22 is 1.22. It's a pretty simple equation that we can rearrange so that for some target angle and wavelength, we can calculate how big the telescope would need to be. So, what's our target angle? Well, this is set by how big of an object we want to see and how far away we want to see it. Let's say we want to see how Triceratops moved around and lived. Then since they're about two meters wide, I probably want to resolve the Earth to about a one meter scale. In this case, we wouldn't see much detail in all of the dinosaurs, but it's better than nothing. So what is the angular size of one meter of the Earth to an alien observer 65 million light years away in NGC 3972. We can work that out with some trigonometry. In this incredibly not to scale picture, on the left we have the observer, and on the right we have the one meter patch of the Earth. And this angle here is the angle we need for the telescope resolution equation. If we put a line through the middle, we can break it up into two right angle triangles. And after writing down Sokotoa, we can work out that the angle is 2 times the inverse tangent of 1 meter divided by 6.2 times 10 to the power of 23 meters. Unsurprisingly, this gives us an incredibly small number, 
2 times 10 to the power of minus 22 degrees. That's the resolution that our dinosaur viewing telescope needs. Alright, so let's say that the aliens are observing green light with a wavelength of 500 nanometers. How big does their telescope need to be to resolve a Triceratops 65 million light years away on Earth? It would need to be a staggering 6 times 10 to the power of 15 meters, or 0.67 light years in diameter. This is truly colossal. There are alien megastructures like Dyson Spheres, and then on a whole other league, there is the Dinosaur Viewing Telescope. To try and put this into context, 0.67 light years dwarfs our solar system. If you were to center it on the sun, the edges of the telescope would be 600 times further away than Pluto is to the sun. It would be buried somewhere deep in the Oort cloud. This is insanely big. You would need to use the resources of numerous star systems to make it. It's so large that you would need to be concerned about its own gravitational pull tugging on itself if it was a single dish, as well as the gravitational pulls of stars and planets nearby it. And not to mention it would get hit constantly by interstellar interlopers moving about space. Using tricks with something called interferometry, you could have smaller telescopes 0.67 light years apart that talk to each other to behave like a single big telescope. But coordinating that would be incredibly hard, if not impossible. But who am I to argue with the aliens? If they want to see dinosaurs as fuzzy blobs, I certainly won't stand in their way. What might stand in their way though is fundamental physics. How much light could they actually receive? Let's assume that there's nothing blocking the light coming from the Earth and going into the colossal dinosaur scope. In that case, we can calculate how bright the Earth would be 65 million light years away based on how bright we see the Earth from orbit. Again, we're interested in green light at 500 nanometers, which according to this spectrum has a peak flux around 1 watt per meter squared per nanometer. We'll take off about 80% of that to account for albedo and extra atmospheric scattering and absorption, leaving us with only 0.2 watts per square meter per nanometer. As light travels away from the Earth, it will spread out and dilute. At the colossal dinosaur scope 65 million light years away, it will only receive 5 times 10 to the power of minus 29 photons per second across a square meter practically zero. In conventional astronomy units, we say this has a magnitude of around 110, which sounds big, but the bigger the number is, the fainter the object. With the James Webb Space Telescope, we would expect to see 30th magnitude objects. So to see dinosaurs, we would need to be 80 orders of magnitude more sensitive, something that we're certainly just not capable of. The real trouble here is that space is brighter than 110th magnitude, so the colossal dinosaur scope simply wouldn't be able to see the dinosaurs through the multitude of light coming from everything else in space. So it seems that it's impossible for anyone to actually see how the Triceratops and other dinosaurs behaved. This is unfortunately the case where we need to be content with what we have and will discover and let our imaginations piece together what would have been the incredible lives of these creatures.